Hey, it's Jake with the Overwatch League. If you have trouble uh, attacking Hanamura Point A or defending it, uh, well, I'm here to help. We're gonna learn today how to attack and defend like a pro, getting the most out of your defense and you know managing to slip through on the offense. It can be a really tough point on either side of Hanamura Point A. So we're gonna dive right into it, look at how the pros do it, and hopefully you can learn something that you can take home to your ranked games. Uh, so first up, we're gonna be looking at the Guangzhou Charge defending against the New York Excelsior. Uh, and this is a classic comp in the meta right now, the double shield comp, uh, and one of the best ways to defend this point in particular, I would say. Uh, and the most important thing I want you to notice is that the attackers essentially just try to rotate into each building one after the other, trying to get closer to the point. Uh, but the defenders, on their part, instead of going super aggressive, trying to end the fight quickly, they focus on using their Orisa to halt the attackers, slow them down so that each time they cross in an open sight line, they take a bunch of damage, they get poked, and maybe get disrupted, particularly by the halt. So, but for New York's part, you see how when they do get disrupted, they try to quickly regroup and find another path that will get them to the point. As New York comes closer and closer to the point, you can see finally Guangzhou starts to group up. Before that, they were staying very split, uh, not wanting to group up and they just get maximum poke value. But once New York gets to the point, that's when the charge really group up. They play as a unit, and crucially, Krong, he's managed to charge his ultimate pretty quickly by the time New York is on point. And that's really what breaks open the fight. And it just shows a textbook example of how to defend this point. You know, defenders are mostly poking, mostly trying to charge ultimates. And then once they hit that critical mass, they've got a key ultimate ready, like the Gravitic Flux. They can go in aggressively and end the fight. Uh, and the first fight on defense is so important. That's usually the attacker's best chance to cap. So uh, it's really, really important that you play this poking style. You charge up your ultimate. So you should have an advantage over the attackers at that point because they're just struggling trying to get through these corridors, right? They're just struggling trying to make it to point. They probably won't have their ultimates charged as fast as you. Uh, so Guangzhou Charge, they do a great job of that. Okay, so now we're going to watch a match that I actually commentated uh, that I think is a really great example of how to defend this point. You know, first Boston Uprising, they play the defense uh, and they do hold that first point. However, what I really want to go over uh, when it comes to this particular match is how the Valiant pulled out a win uh, in this situation. Normally, this is just a place where, frankly, you wouldn't expect a win. You know, you would expect that uh, once you get that full hold, it's relatively easy, relatively consistent to cap point A. But I think the Boston Uprising made a critical mistake. And that mistake is, now, let's think about all the comps we've seen before. The defenders, they can position wherever they want on the map. They can be on the high grounds. They can surround the attackers. Uh, you know, they can dive because they're already on the high ground to start the game off. They can just have such flexible play on the defense that they're always going to have a big edge. However, the one advantage that the attackers have that a lot of attacking teams just forget to utilize, that advantage is the ability to counter pick. So, because the Valiant know they got full hold and they are pretty desperate, they need to pick a very greedy composition that has the best chance to full hold, they go with the Mercy on deep, uh, which isn't the standard pick when you're playing this composition. Usually you'd play the Brig, as Boston did, but when you need to full hold, I love the choice of the Mercy. That res gives you the staying power, you know, gives you a better chance to actually be making the full hold. If you get picked, you know, you'll still have the res to keep your as six players. And as well, damage boost onto Ash is deadly. I mean, the hero is really, really strong with the damage boost. However, Boston Uprising, they go for a comp that is all about death balling, all about grouping up and rushing the enemy down. They've got a Torb and a Reaper, but they actually push with this comp. And I think this is a huge error because you're playing into a damage boosted Ash and a Zenyatta, a Genji, like every single hero that the Los Angeles Valiant is running. All six of them are great at dealing with death ball. They can all cleave. And I think if they had just played dive from the start, they would have had a much better chance. But the key mistake that they made was they didn't just, just wait 15 seconds. You can see the enemy composition on, on your tab key. And that allows you to make the right decision when it comes to uh, picking your composition. And I think if they had had that discipline and had waited more patiently, they would have realized that they needed to play a full dive strategy. They wouldn't have gone for this death ball comp. And I think that it ultimately is what ends up costing them the map, uh, costing them the series. So uh, I think this is something you can absolutely learn from in your pubs, uh, in your ranked games, because I see this all the time. People pick a composition that maybe makes sense on attack is theoretically, you know, it's not like the death ball composition is totally terrible. However, when you're playing into what the Valiant are playing on defense, I think it's, it's a really poor decision. Well, 
you know, that's all well and good, but pretty much no matter what you do, attacking is going to be hard on Hanamura point A. There's not really any getting around that. The choke point is just brutal. The defenders, they're always going to have an edge. It's always going to be just a little bit easier for them to fight. Uh, given the positions that they can play. So if you're sick and tired of that mechanic, if you're just done trying to push through the choke, then I would recommend a classic stinky cheese Symmetra TP strategy. Uh, one thing to note though, is that this is a composition that you really need your whole team to be on the same page for. And we're gonna be looking at how the Dallas Few will do it against the Washington Justice. Obviously that you need the sim for the strategy, right? To TP to the point and fight on the point. But the May, I would argue, is just as important. I don't think there's any DPS hero that can replace the May because once you get to that point, clearly the defenders, they're gonna come fight you. They have to hold the point. So what better hero than May to ice wall one of those choke points and the first defender to come through and to try and hold the point while well, they're gonna be isolated from their team. Uh, when it comes to the tank lineup, I think Arissa, Reinhardt, uh, Sigma, they're all good choices. I would say that you should really stay away from heroes like Zarya, Roadhog, um, Winston, or Hammond, because all those heroes are more focused on dealing damage than surviving. You don't want tanks that deal damage. You want tanks that just keep your Symmetra alive, that keep her fighting, and, and same for the mace. Uh, and then for the supports, the most important thing is that you've got a lot of AoE healing and AoE survivability. If you have supports like Lucio, Batiste, Moira and Brigida, they're all going to be great at that AoE survivability, you know, keeping the team fighting, keeping them in position on point. Um, the first thing to note here from the fuel is that they approach along this uh, alleyway right side so that it's hard to scout the composition they're running because, you know, you do rely to some extent on the surprise factor when you're playing this comp. So uh, the most important thing is that you're coming up on that right side, you're following, everyone is together, everyone is already prepared to take the teleport. You don't want to dilly dally, you don't want to let the enemy team think about what you're doing because if they were to you know stand on point right where you want it to be it would be pretty awkward to tp there so uh, the dallas fuel they move quick it's a great work for it they're going to tp to the high ground uh because actually the justice did exactly that they anticipated the sim comp and they played on point if you see this cheese coming out that is the best response just be on point preemptively so it's awkward to tp in uh, the fuel they make it work because they just tp to the high ground uh, and they're just going to approach point from another angle but is nonetheless the strategy it still got them through the choke and they're still running a sim who can actually deal an incredible amount of damage if she's protected and enabled to use that left click on enemy sheep uh, overall great work by the dallas fuel i love that little adaptation that they chose to teleport to the high ground as opposed to teleporting straight on point because they realized the justice had already adapted had already maybe predicted this strategy to come out so they were holding on point defensively so a little subtle adaptation is instead of tp'ing right on the point you tp to the high ground and drop into point as a unit uh, and you still get a lot of value out of this comp it's still an effective way to play the game all right everybody this has been play like a pro with jake uh, i hope you learned something today about hanamura point a uh, we went over some different strategies the double shield the dive uh, and some nice Symmetra TP cheese strat. Uh, I hope there's something out of those that you can make use of in your rank games. Maybe score some ELO. Uh, remember, just focus on that teamwork. That's what it's all about in Overwatch. Uh, and make sure to comment down below. Let us know what map you want to do next. You know, where are you struggling? Where are you having difficulty, you know, capping the point or, or holding defensively? Where do you need that extra assistance? We're going to keep providing more from this series. So uh, please do let us know what we should cover next, what you need help with. Uh, this has been Jake from the Overwatch League, and this has been Play Like a Pro.